10 reasons not to sell your Harley Davidson. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Revelate Alpha. Hope you're well. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell for all future videos. <gasps> so, Harley Davidson, I ride. As you know, if you watch the channel, Sport Glide. I've loved this bike pretty much from the, from the moment I got on it, or the model, uh, when I first test rode it, right? And it's coming to a point now where I've got to make a decision, whether I keep it or whether I sell it. Now, I could make a, a video about all the kind of negative thoughts that I've had or all the things I think I could get a better deal elsewhere, but I don't want to do that because that wouldn't be a true reflection of why I've been thinking about selling it. And I really wanted to make a video about actually a lot of thoughts that I have been having about keeping it, not getting another bike. So that's what I thought. I thought I'd make a video about, well, why would I even sell my bike? Whether it's a Harley, whether it's a Suzuki, whether it's a Kawasaki, I think the same rules apply. So these are my, I suppose, 10 good, 10 good reasons why I should not sell my bike, not sell my Harley. Number one, okay, number one is this. And it's got nothing to do with a bike, right? Sometimes life just throws you a curveball, right? And you have plans, say, okay, in six months time, I'm going to sell my bike, I'm going to sell my car, whatever. And if something else comes along and you think, do you know what? Maybe I could use that money elsewhere. So that's reason number one, a financial decision, whether you should just keep your bike, stick with what you got, or whether you should invest more money in buying a brand new bike or whatever it is so that's rule number one or reason number one it just makes financial sense just to keep it right now number two number two i suppose this is one of the rules that i live by if it ain't broke don't fix it in other words if your bike's still running great electrically mechanically it's all working well then there's no real reason to get rid of it right there's no real reason to invest a load more money in a bike when you're still perfectly happy with the bike that you've got. It's, it's trouble-free riding, right? So that's number two. Number three, do you still like the bike? Forget about financial sense, forget about where it's mechanically, electrically sound. Do you like it? Well, I love that bike. So therefore, I'm kind of thinking, why would I sell it, right? Yeah? Okay, number four. I think this is number four, I've lost count already. <laughs> number four is, is there a better option out there? Now, if you remember last year, I was doing loads of test rides of other bikes, and indeed, there are better options for particular types of riding that are out there, right? But as an overall package, and considering the money that I have to put down, for me, there isn't a better option. There isn't a better option right now for the same kind of money. In other words, the value that I would have in, the trading value, and what can I pick up? I would be out of pocket, and I don't think the riding experience would be better. So that's number four. Is there anything better? For me, right now, not really. Okay, number five. Here's, it's, it's an interesting one, right? Because you can't really put your finger on it. Would I get the same sensation, the same kind of feeling on another motorcycle? Well, maybe on another Harley Davidson, maybe on an Indian, I would get that kind of V-twin feel, that guttural feel, that, you know, that, um, that sound that Harley tried to patent uh, a few years ago, whatever it was. But would I get the same feeling? I can't. You know, I'm sort of riding around, cruising around, and I think, wow, it's such a great feeling just to be cruising around, just chugging along on my Harley. I absolutely love it. I kind of find it very peaceful as well. And I'd miss that feeling. I would miss that sound. So, yeah. Would I get the same sensation? Not, not if I moved away from a Harley Davidson, I wouldn't. That's something you have to live with. Okay, number six. God, we were at six already. Right, here's one of the things that I kind of look at right now. Does it still suit my style of riding or the riding that I'm gonna be doing, let's say for the next year, next two years? If I wanna do touring on it, I always knew I could do it. I know there are better touring options, of course, better touring Harleys, better touring BMWs, better touring Triumphs, whatever it is. Indians, right? There are better tours out there, but I could still tour on it. I could still do all the, the stuff that I do, the backwards and forwards, or all, all my work stuff, or my channel stuff, whatever it is, just my leisure stuff, my enjoyment riding, I get it all on there. So it suits my riding now, 
it has suited my riding and it definitely will suit my riding for the next year two years five years whatever it is so from that point of view it's a win-win so yeah it still suits my uh, style of riding and the kind of riding that i'm going to do number seven is it worth the loss and i'm not talking about spiritual you know emotional loss and all that kind of stuff right i'm talking about actually dollars and cents pounds and shekels right i'm talking about financial loss is it worth getting rid of this bike and losing the financial value that i have in it or limited financial value in it and the amount of money that i'd have to lose in other words spend to go and get another bike is it worth it right now it isn't. If you remember back when I was making all the videos about other bikes, I was kind of weighing up, you know, well, I've got good trading value on this. Then I was hit with a bit of a hammer on the head to say, actually, there's hardly any value in it. There's a lot less than I actually thought it was. And I thought, crikey, that's a, that's a big hit to take on this bike that's only, what, five, six years old now, yeah, five years old now, you know, and to then have to spend a load more money on another bike. So that's it. It's not worth the loss in in the money while still everything on it is still great right so yeah keep it keep it might as well keep it okay number i've lost count number eight i think it's number eight is it still and this is something that's probably going to either annoy or baffle people right but but i kind of think it's it's relevant is it still a bike that turns heads do people remark on the bike? Now, it's not that I'm necessarily looking for that, but I've got to say, it's really nice when you get nice looks, nice comments. And I still get it. I still get it on this bike, riding around and somebody say, yeah, nice. Or somebody give me a thumbs up, or you know, you can see people looking at it. That's it. It gives you that nice feeling, and it's part of the whole equation. So does it still turn heads? Yes, it does. Do I walk away from the bike? And this is a big thing as well. You walk away from the bike and you always take a one moment to have a look back and see, you know, you look at your bike. And I do that all the time. So yes, definitely it's still got curb appeal for me. Right, number nine, and this is gonna be a bit, I suppose it kind of relates to the other things that I've been talking about, but is it, as it stands, is it future-proofed? In other words, can I see this bike still being relevant to the kind of riding that I'm doing in the next five years? And the answer is yes, but at a push. I'd be pushing it, I think, a little bit. And this is all dependent whether it's still mechanically, electrically sound and all that kind of stuff. But I can still see myself riding this bike and it'd still be suitable, but it would still be suitable as technology moves on as well. I could add tech to it if I wanted to, but actually I'm moving away from tech. I've been making videos recently, you know, companies offer me tech all the time. And you know, most of the time I just turn them down and most of the time I think, why do I need this? You know, you don't need it as a, as a bike. And this is the kind of thing that I'm looking at. There are bikes that I could go to that got a lot more tech, but I just think, do I really need it? I kind of like that simplicity. So the future proofing for me is actually keeping it as simple as possible and that's what i like actually i like i like that about all machines simplicity so is it still going to be good for the next five years but in terms of future proofing in terms of tech well i'm not concerned about tech it's a low tech bike in many ways you know i'm not concerned about infotainment and all that sort of stuff where like a street glide or something like that or road glide whatever I'll be concerned in four or five years time. Does it look dated? Is it, there's something going wrong with it? Whereas this, there's nothing on there. So, hey, future proof is good. Okay, 10 is a really stupid one, but I think this it all relates to your relationship with that bike or with your bike, right? Whatever it is. Do you like it that much? Do you love it so much that you would feel aggrieved if somebody else was riding your bike? That's, that's, that's what I would look at. Would I feel a little bit pissed off that I'd sold the bike, I've regret selling it, and then I know that somebody else is riding it? And I've got to say, right now, yes, yes, I, I would. I would feel aggrieved. I, I, I'd kind of be kicking myself 
I think why have I sold this bike it was still perfectly fine and why is somebody else riding that bike when I should be riding it I know it's a stupid reason possibly but possibly many of you might kind of identify with that they kind of understand yeah I, I, I totally get it if you like the bike and all the reasons and it's still working for you why would you sell it and then if you've sold it you probably regret it and then if you see somebody else riding it you probably think shit i should be riding that bike do you know what i mean so anyway listen those are kind of my 10 reasons to not sell this bike there there are possibly another 10 reasons that i could think of there's certainly equally as many that i think I could sell it really i could find another bike but i suppose this is my kind of reflection of how i've been feeling i'm approaching that time where it's coming to the end of its insurance policy should i sell it should i keep it bearing in mind all those test rides i did last year i thought about now would be the right time to sell it if i was going to sell it factor in curve balls of life and everything like that and you think well why would i sell it if i still love it let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell on future videos. And I will catch you again in another video coming very soon. Bye now.